Hey guys, we're back with the next BioLane video log. Yes, before anybody says anything about my shirt, yes, it's a Brazil soccer shirt, uh, or football, I'm sorry. Um, no, I don't really follow soccer, but uh, my client Marcelo, awesome guy, is from Brazil, and uh, he gave me this shirt. And uh, yes, I know they got stomped by Germany, but I don't care because my arms look awesome in this shirt. Just saying. So, uh, yes, I'm full on bro, what can I say? Um, so anyways, at the end of the last uh, video log, we were kind of talking about uh, volume and its importance for making progress and strength and hypertrophy, frequency, and appropriate progression. And so now I want to talk about uh, rep schemes uh, and how they, they affect things. Rep schemes and overtraining, okay? So, repetition wise, I'll have a lot of people, people say, well, if it's just training volume lane, then why do we have recommendations that say for hypertrophy, lift in an 8 to 15 rep range, and for strength, lift in a like 3 to 5 rep range, or 1 to 5 rep range, or whatever it is. And what you have to understand about the research out there on strength and hypertrophy is that <laughs> it's typically equated for sets. So, for example, they may look at, say, five sets of five uh, versus five sets of ten, okay? Uh, but what can you do for five sets of five? Well, let's look at, well, me for example, okay? When I could do, let's just for easy math, when I could do five sets of five with 500 pounds on squat, my 10 rep max on squat was probably around uh, 455. So if I did... Uh, or I'm sorry, what I could do for five sets of 10 would be around 440, okay? 440, 450, something like that. So if you look at the total training volume with the five sets of 10, I was absolutely getting more volume. I was getting a lot more volume, like over 20,000 pounds of volume. Um, whereas if you look at the five sets of five or 500, uh, it, it, was, it, it would be like around 15,000 pounds of volume, actually less than that, I think. So, I'm doing quick math in my head, so please forgive me, my arithmetic is off. But, the, tr the, tr the problem is you're not equating for volume, okay? The reason higher reps in the literature typically show more hypertrophy is because it's easier to get more volume with higher reps, okay? Now, if you equate for volume, you find something much different, okay? There was a recent study by Brad Schoenfeld where they looked at equating volume and doing, uh, for example, either three sets of 10 reps or seven sets of three reps, okay? And they equated for volume, all right? And what they found was strength and hypertrophy, uh, or I'm sorry, hypertrophy outcomes were the same, okay? There was no difference. But strength actually tended to be better with the lower rep range, okay? Now, why is that beneficial? Well, if you can if you can lift heavier over time, you're actually going to create more overload. Okay, even at the same uh, amount of uh, sets and reps, so that helps contribute to overall volume over time. Okay, so so volume again is the most important thing when you're looking at these rep ranges. Now, that's not to say that we should all be doing seven sets of three. Or <laughs> as my friend Mike Zordo says. He's like, if you want me to tell you how many sets and reps to do, you haven't been paying attention, okay? That's a stupid question. It's an absolutely stupid, erroneous way of thinking. There is no magical set and rep range. You've got to think about things in the context of total volume you are doing, okay? So if we look at setting up a training block, and in terms of periodization, which we're going to talk about later, um, a training block that's properly periodized, we have to make sure we're increasing volume over time, okay? Uh, now, we can incorporate higher rep ranges because higher rep ranges allow us to more easily get to that volume number. Now, why? Okay, well, look at what they did in this study. Three sets of 10. You can go in and do three sets of 10 easily in around half an hour, right? Now, it warmed up, it's not included, all that sort of stuff. But you can easily get that done in half an hour. If you're doing seven sets of three with heavy weight, I mean, I know when I do seven sets of three with heavy weight, it's going to take me at least an hour. Okay, so you're not equip so the time your time investment is going to be greater doing that. All right, so those are those are things to consider. 
but you're going to get a better strength outcome with the lower reps. Why? Well, probably because of the neurological adaptations, okay? You're being more specific, closer to a one rep max, and that's why it's better for strength, all right? So, it's important to keep in mind, yes, rep ranges can make a difference. I'm not saying that there's not a use for high reps. There absolutely is. 10 reps, 15 reps, 20 reps, you definitely can get uh, uh, improvements in hypertrophy, but less so with strength. If you use uh, more, more, if you're using lower reps and you're doing more sets and you equate for volume, you can get the same hypertrophy benefits, but it's going to take you longer in terms of the workout time. Okay, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now you can try and go through seven sets of three quickly, but your performance is going to suck. Okay, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, now, the people will ask the, the next kind of logical question is, well, Lane, if, if it's just volume, uh, couldn't I just put 100 pounds on the squat bar and do 100 reps, or I'm sorry, you know, 1,000 reps, you know, do 10 sets of 100 or something like that, and I'm really, I'm getting a lot of total volume. Yes, you are, and, and that, is a value, that is a very uh, pertinent critique. Would you still produce the same hypertrophy outcomes? Most likely not. Uh, we don't have really much evidence looking at this. I'd like to see more. Um, but my intuitive response is there probably is a minimum threshold of intensity that you have to hit in order for volume to be a dominant factor. Okay? So you can't just do pink dumbbells all day. Okay? You're, you're not... It, because You say, well, I'm only doing five pounds, but I'm doing thousands of reps, and so my volume's really high. There probably is a minimum threshold that you need to hit. We don't know what that is, because uh, there's a lot of data out there showing you can still get hypertrophy benefits with very low intensity with very high reps. Okay? So that's going to be something that the research needs to dive into more over time, all right? Is, is looking into these rep ranges and trying to figure out, is there a minimum threshold for intensity, all right? What I will tell you is that if you're going over 60% of your one rep max, uh, you're going to be safe, all right? So anywhere over 60% of your one rep max. Now, again, I'm not saying you can't get hypertrophy lifting less than that. But what I'm saying for, if we're talking about equating for volume, um, I would feel safe recommending over 60%. Now, I don't have any real hard data to back that up. That's just my kind of off-the-cuff uh, gut feeling, all right? So anywhere within 60 to 100%, if you're if you're equating for volume, you're going to get similar results. Okay, so do what you enjoy. If you like higher reps, you can focus on a program with higher reps. If you like lower reps, you can focus on a program with lower reps. But you have to properly periodize it, and that's something we're going to talk about in a later in a later video log. Now, overtraining. People talk about overtraining. I had a whole video log on this. I recommend you go back and watch it. Um, but essentially, people have this idea that. Because I'll talk about volume and they'll say, well, what about overtraining? What about overtraining? Uh, you can absolutely overreach to the point where your performance falls off. That's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Olympic athletes do this on purpose. They overreach on purpose heading into the Olympics. And then they taper before the Olympics and they get a rebound effect. And they actually get way better performance, okay? When I went to do USAPL Raw Nationals a few weeks ago, I, uh, my last training block... Uh, was six weeks long, and three weeks into it, my performance was going like this pretty steadily, okay? I was overreached, I wasn't fully recovering between sessions, but that's okay, that's okay. I'm getting my training volume in, uh, and, when, and what happened was when I tapered and uh, allowed myself, I, I cut my volume down, I cut my intensity down that last week, I tapered, I performed great on contest day. Okay, you have to separate how you feel. How you feel during training is a lie. Okay, it's a lie. So you have to separate how you feel from how you're going to perform. As my friend Mike Zordo says, who gives a damn how you feel while you're training? The question should be, do you perform well on meet day, test day, or on stage? That's it. That's the question. If you feel like crap the entire time you train, but you set a PR or you look your best ever on stage, then who gives a damn what you felt like when you train, okay? And, and some days you are going to feel good, some days you're going to feel bad. But 
my performance was steadily decreasing, and uh, it was that way for three weeks. And I, I still had it in my head, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, there's no way. I mean, I was doing doubles with 555, and those were slow as hell and felt terrible. This was a week and a half before the meet, and I smoked 650 at the meet, okay? So, again, it's disconnecting how you feel during training versus what actually produces results, okay? Um, two things I want to leave you with in terms of overtraining. Uh, so, so overreaching actually can be a tool that can be useful, okay? Let me leave you with that. Overreaching is a tool that can be useful, all right? As long as you taper correctly and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then super compensate. Two things. Uh, Dr. Zorro said, well, one thing Dr. Zorro said was, um, said the, the first day, you ever, have you ever worked a hard labor job? Okay? He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, or, or if you, most of us have done something at some point that required, you know, some kind of hard labor. That first day, that night, you went home, you were probably exhausted, felt like crap, and the next day you woke up, woke up sore. Right, he used the example of a garbage man tossing garbage cans into a truck all day. Okay, woke up sore. The next day, do you do you, do you call in and say, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm all really overtrained. I'm not recovered. I, I can't come in." No, of course not. <laughs> you lose your job. So you go in, you do it again, and what happens? Well, you get gradually less and less sore over time until you don't really get sore at all from doing your 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 daily job, and that's because your body adapts. Your body, your, your skeletal muscle is amazingly adaptive, okay, and will adapt to almost anything you throw at it. Like we talked about, Dr. Zordos squatted to a max for almost like 100 days straight, okay, got stronger, okay, his performance was going like this the entire time, but it went up over time, okay, because his body adapted to that, all right, your body can adapt to almost everything, anything, but again, as we talked about in the last video, it's got to be an appropriate progression. Right, it should be appropriate progression. You don't want to start out squatting to a max every single day. <laughs> it won't end well. You'll get you'll get injured. Okay, but it doesn't mean that you can't work up to that over years and years and years and decades of training. Okay. The other thing, and, and just to put it in context, so John Braz, I believe, is the, this is his quote. He was talking about um, somebody asked him about overtraining because I believe he has his his lifters squat to a max kind of daily. And uh, he said, if somebody kidnapped your family, I may, I may butcher this quote, but the gist of it will be accurate. Somebody kidnapped your family, and the ransom was you had to put 100 pounds on your squat in a few months. Would you squat once per week? And, and intuitively, no, you wouldn't squat once per week. I think I proposed that, I think I said that to Ryan Doris, and he was like, Phew. he's like, yeah, you know, you, you wouldn't. You just intuitively know that that's not optimal, but we have people that try to promote it as being optimal. Okay. Don't fear overreaching. It's, it's something that should be part of your programming. If you're, if you're programming correctly, you should get overreached at some point, taper, super compensate, and then you'll have even better results. Okay. But you have to incorporate, it's just like we talked about failure. Failure is a tool. You have to incorporate it appropriately. Overreaching is a tool. You have to incorporate it appropriately. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. We got more coming, coming up.